sing in your presence until you come again. Come on, y'all. Let's dance in your presence. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Hallelujah. And we'll sing in your presence until you come again. We'll dance and we'll dance and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Hallelujah. And we'll sing and we'll sing in your presence until you come again. And we'll dance in your presence, and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. Hallelujah. And we'll sing, and we'll sing in your presence until you come again. King of glory. Hallelujah. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Oh, yeah. King of glory. Fill this place. I just want to be with you. I don't want to be nowhere else, God. I just want to be with you. Can we say it again? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you, laying at your feet. I just want to be with you. King of glory, King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you daily at your feet. I just want to be with you, King of glory, hallelujah. King of glory, fill this place. Place. I just want to be with you. I just want to be with you. Can we say it one more time? King of glory, fill this place. I just want to be with you. Just want to be with you, so we'll dance, so we'll dance in your presence until you come again, hallelujah, and we'll sing in your presence until you come again, Lord, we want to dance and we'll dance in your presence until you come again. No better place to be. And we'll sing in your presence until you come again. Hallelujah. And we'll dance. And we'll dance in your presence until you come again. David danced, hallelujah, and we'll sing in your presence until you come again, and we'll dance in your prayer, and we'll dance in your presence, 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 dance in your presence. Dance in your presence, dance in your prayer, and we'll dance in your presence. Dance in your presence, 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 dance in, we'll sing, and we'll sing in your presence, sing in your presence. Sing in your presence, 
Sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence, and we'll sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence, and we'll sing in your presence, sing in your presence, sing in your presence. Lord, my soul says yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes, I will answer and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my heart I will agree. And the answer to your will, Lord, yes. Let's sing it one more time. I'll say yes, Lord, yes. To your will and to your way, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will answer and obey when the Spirit speaks to me. With my whole heart, I'll agree, and my answer to your will, Lord, yes. One more time, y'all. I'll say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I'll say, I'll say yes, Lord, yes. I will answer and obey. When the Spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree, and my answer to your will, and my answer, and my answer to your will, and my answer to your will, no matter and my answer to your will, no matter what they say. And my answer to your will, no matter what I see. And my no matter how I feel, my answer, no matter what I see. And my answer to your will. And my answer to your will, and my answer to your will, Lord, yes. Hallelujah. Give God some glory. Hallelujah. 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 I think it was Isaiah who talked about how he seen God's train fill the temple. And so I was just thinking about it and how sometimes we may see chairs and it's not a lot of people. But when God is in the place, see his train, see his train, his train is enough to fill the temple. His train is enough. He never did say, Isaiah didn't say he seen God's face, but he said his train filled the temple. Imagine what that means. That means that everything that comes along with God, that means that everything that comes along and behind God, everything that is up under him, everything that's within him, fill the temple. Can you imagine that? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Uh, when we were on our, when we were on our, on our trip, uh, we were, we were, um, I had went to sleep and was uh, getting doing getting some rest in and and um, God showed me He gave me a uh, a vision. It was a and and this is what happened. So in the vision and it just goes to tell you that 
not just because I had the vision, but everybody is having visions. People that don't even normally talk about visions or, or talk about, you know, the end of the world or, you know, is God really coming? You know, they're starting to see and hear what their grandmothers and them talked about. And, like, I remember my grandma saying things like, you know, the world, you know, God is coming soon. And it may have been 20, 30, maybe 40 years ago, but they like, I'm seeing it now. I'm seeing it now. God is so good. So in the vision, me and Crystal were driving, and we seen missiles going off in the sky over our head in dark gray smoke clouds. It was so smoky. They were really, really dark, and they were puffy, going, going like, I mean, it's, it's just like just missiles. I ain't never seen it in, on, in person, but on TV you have. And when we seen this, we started praying, and we were driving at the same time. But with my right hand, with her left hand, we held hands, and we started praying. Lord, forgive them, for they know not what they do. Lord, forgive us for our sins. And we just started praying and praying for the people who we didn't even know. We just started praying basically for the nation. And then all of a sudden, we ended up, we were out of the car, and we ended up on the back of a long-bedded truck. You know, the, the diesel trucks, how the back of the bed is not loaded with anything and doesn't have one of the carriers in it. Well, it was a long bed like that. And on it, there were people of different descents, people of different cultures. And we then stopped and were waved. We, we stopped it abruptly, and we were waved to get off of it. We were waved to exit. They were in military attire. And the military attire was not the regular American military attire. It was a really, really dark green. And then when you looked at the soldiers, they had guns and stuff on them, but they were of an Asian or Chinese descent. And we were made to get into a building. We were made to rush into a building where it was like a clinic. And the clinic, when you go in, it was glass, you know, and you could see in each room, but it was set up as a clinic. The guy who was there, he had on like a, a smocks, you know, uh, as they do for nursing and different things like that. And we were set down. Well, when we were made to go into this clinic, it was something where it was receiving a shot or a mark of some type. It was something where you had to re they were going to give you some type of injection or, or something of that sort. And uh, I seen a guy by the name of 50 that I knew, and he had taken this thing. But when he had taken it, I wasn't in the same room, but when I seen him, he had just left out of the room and looked very weary in his eyes. He was something like almost a zombied out. He knew who I was, but he couldn't speak to me. And he had went off, uh, Crystal had then went off to a counter. And when she had went off to the counter, I looked back, and it was like she was over there trying to talk to them about whatever was going on. And then all of a sudden, she was gone. She had disappeared. And I remember listening to the man who was in the room that I was in, and he was telling information about what was going on, but it was in a totally different language. And he wasn't, there was no one there to uh, give sign language or to tell me exactly what was being said, but I could tell him that he was in a different language and he was explaining what this particular thing was that was in his hand. In his hand, I couldn't see it at all, but he was speaking in an unknown tongue. And then after that, I woke up. And I thought to myself, Lord, whatever it is, I'm sure that he'll reveal it in time, just as he is pro revealing his prophecy to all of us. And so, uh, but that was the vision that I have. I bless the Lord on today. I'm grateful to see all of you all's young faces. And just stay in the, stay, <laughs> stay in the, in the race um, because it's not given, it's not given to just anybody, but it's given to the strong and the one that's going to endure to the end. Amen. Rafe is not, it's, 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 it's true. It's, it's real. So let's just stay, uh, I'm not giving this to, let's just stay, uh, together and stay prayed up and, uh, go forth in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Race is not given to the swift. Amen. 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 Amen.
the glory and all the honor and all the praise. Amen. Man, God is so good. Amen. I'm just going to say a prayer before we begin and go right into the word. Amen. Most graciously and heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for this is the day that you have made. Lord, we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father God, we thank you for allowing us to come together again once more time, Father God, in your house. Father God, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise. Father God, we ask that you would open up our hearts and our minds, Lord, that we may be able to receive your word. But not only receive your word, Father God, but take your word, Father God, and share it with someone else. Lord, we just give you glory, honor, and praise in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Amen. I'll say yes. Amen. I'll say yes. Amen. And my answer to your will. Amen. I'll say yes. Amen. Amen. For a subject tonight, um, I chose dig your well before you're thirsty. Amen. You know how a lot of us say, you know, um, you don't miss your water until your well runs dry. So I looked up the word, what a, a well represents. And um, wells have always had great significance, uh, strategic importance, uh, especially in the East. In the East, uh, too, it was, uh, wells are used to sustain life for families and communities and they were frequently the source of disputes and strife. Uh, they're mentioned many times in the scriptures and often given meaningful spiritual names. If you notice, a lot of times when they were at the wells, the wells were given a name. So when a new well was dug in an unoccupied area, it was named as it was named and the surrounding land was claimed. Therefore, it became a lifeline for the community and a landmark to the stranger for rest and refreshment. So we know that the well is a symbol of community. And in the ancient times, the well was both symbolically and often literally located in the center of the community, in the center of the community. And so, and we know that in, in those communities, they went to draw water. Uh, you know, we know that water represents the basic substance for life. We need water to live. The well represents the social resources of the community that are necessary to endure and to thrive. So if you think about a well, you can think of this place as a well. You can think of this, this actual church ground as a well in order for us to be able to endure and to thrive. And so many, even at this time, we know this is not the time, but there are so many that are falling away, and so many are thirsty. They're, 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 they're dying of thirst because they're not coming into the place necessary for them to thrive and to endure. Uh, they're not coming where, I mean, God, Jesus is everywhere. But at the same time, you need um, an order. It, it, takes, it takes a lot. I mean, you can dig a well up on your own, but how long will that well last? How long will, the well, uh, how will, how long will it last for you just up on your own resources? And so you need uh, thriving. You need your community, amen, in order for you to be able to thrive, in order for you to endure, because sometimes it, you get tired. Sometimes you get worried. And when you stop digging, there's somebody else to continue to dig so that the water supply continues to come through. And so we know that when you think about a well, uh, let's look at first before I go any further. Let's look at Numbers 21, verse 16 through 17. Numbers 21, verses 16 through 17. Amen. And it reads, and from thence there they went to bear, that is the well, excuse me, that is the well whereof the Lord spake unto Moses, gather the people together and I will give them water. Then Israel sang the song, spring up, O well, sing unto thee. Amen. We know that there are so many times that God did so many miracles and notable events that occurred at so many wells. Uh, so that's the revelation of, to, of God to Hagar. We know that's in Genesis chapter 16. 
Rebecca's encounter with uh, Abraham's servant. We know about Jacob's well, David's well, and these were life-changing uh, experiences for those involved. So, uh, you know, it's used as a, a figure of speech of moral and spiritual concepts. It's like the mouth of a righteous. It says the ri mouth of a righteous man is a well of life, a well of life. You know, and so when you think about a well, we cannot wait until we're thirsty to begin digging a well. Don't wait until you're thirsty. It's like, you know, you're waiting until you're thirsty. Then you, 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 it's like you can't even get what you get. You're going to miss something, you know. You're going to mess something up or you're going to miss something if you wait until you're thirsty. And then if you do, you will likely die of thirst before you get the water that you need. Okay, so we have to prepare ahead of time before any of our needs arise. That is the reason for the will. That is the reason why you come in, that you get the water that you get so that you can be refreshed. Amen. So that you can you can't give you can't give anybody else any water if you if you yourself are not drinking. Right. I mean, you can't do it. It's impossible. And there are times when we are we have spiritual thirst. And and until that's and, and until we wait until such time to dig our well, it may be just too late. You don't want to wait too late. We need to be digging our wells now. As you can tell right now, what's going on in the world, you know, what's going on with Ukraine, and many of us are thinking that we're not going to be affected by it. Little unbeknownst to so many, we already are affected by it. Amen. We can't wait. We can't stop. The time is now. This is not the time to be falling away. This is not the time to let uh, small things keep you away. This is not the time to be worrying about self. You know, worrying about self. I mean, we got a whole community out there. He says, go into the highways and the hedges and the byways and bring the people in. And we can't bring them in uh, and give them anything if we ourselves are dry, if we are parched, if, you know, if we're not getting the water that we need. So are you digging your well well before you're thirsty? Maybe it's going to help you to remind you there is a need for the wells. And I have a lot of scripture, and so for time's sake, I'm just going to give you a lot of it, uh, give, give you the scriptures. But the need for wells, the day of judgment. There is a day of judgment that is coming, and we all know that judgment is coming soon. And in this judgment, in which the world is going to be judged, the world is going to be judged. I'm going to go to Acts chapter 17, verses 30 through 31. That's Acts chapter 17, verses 30 through 31. In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commanded all men everywhere to repent because he had appointed a day in which he would judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he had ordained whereof he had given assurance unto all men in that he had raised him from the dead. Amen. So there is a time, you know, we have to repent. We have to repent daily. We have to stay in an ever state of repentant, uh, repentance. And then there's gonna, we're going to have to stand before Christ. We all are going to have to stand before Christ. That, that is the need for the reason for your will. You can't get off by yourself. When you get off by yourself, most of the time, 90% of the time, you're going to be, you're going to come up with your own. Because now we're in a time where everybody thinks that anything goes. You know, everybody, um, whatever I feel, is they, they're based off of their feelings and, and what they think is right for them and what they think is, is good for this and good for that. And no one is no longer looking at what the word of God. We just read previously where we said there was a time that God winked at their ignorance. But he's not going to keep winking because we are no longer ignorant. Once you are in the know, you are in the know. It ain't no, I didn't know, didn't nobody tell me, you heard, he sent, they went. And so now it is. this is not the time. I mean, the time is at hand and the time is near. There's no more rumors of wars. There are wars that are going on. And they're right here. They're right in your background. They're right in your backyard. We don't have time to be sitting on the side worried about all these differences and uh, spits and spats and sputes and all these things that we've done before. You know, it's time now to let this stuff roll off your back and keep going and get in there with the punches, you know, and keep moving 
and go on forth because we are called for such a time as this to be able to open up our mouths and share the gospel truth of, 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 of God and who he truly is. You know, I look at the, we have no reason to be, I have no reason. I'm just going to speak for me. I have no reason to be walking around mad, sad, upset, no, no nothing. It, it's too much going on. You know, that, that, those are minor things. You know what I'm just saying? There is so much more to be worried about. And as a Christian, we're supposed to be out there, like I said, winning souls. And we know a time, a day of salvation is going to be a, a day of salvation for some and condemnation for others. Yeah. When he comes back. Yeah, which line, which, which one is it going to be for you? A day of salvation or a day of condemnation? Some will hear the good news. That's in Matthew 26, 34. Others going to hear terrible words. Matthew 26, 41. And it's going to be too late to begin digging wells if we are spiritually thirsty on that day. It's going to be too late. You're not going to have time. It's too late. You need to be digging your wells now. The enemy wants to get you off track. We don't have time for that. We've did all the games. We didn't been pulled off track. We should see it coming a mile away. But so many times we're thirsty. We're thirsty because we're not getting in our word. Amen. We're not worshiping. We're not doing what God has called each and every one of us to do. We don't even spend time in our word at all. You know, we won't open it up until we're here on Wednesdays and Sundays. What are you do? How are you surviving in between those on uh, Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays, Fridays and Saturday? What are you doing? Are you not are you not drinking your water? Are you not? And then we get in here and then we only want a trickle of the water because we want you to hurry up because I got stuff to do. And you cannot survive without having any water. You can go days without food, but you can't go that long without water. Yeah, he said, man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds.